Riyadh's season has not only reignited boxing across the board, giving us everything from great domestic dust-ups to undisputed fights, but there is one division that has woken up into life since the Saudis kick-started boxing, and that division is heavyweight. If you look at the current BoxRec heavyweight top 10, you will see that nearly every single man in that top 10 has now boxed on Riyadh's season. And the matchups that we are getting are providing us with both career rises and falls for the fighters. Daniel Dubois, Joseph Parker, Ajit Kabayel, Martin Bacoli have all emerged as either champions or serious contenders as part of Riyadh's season and as part of their acceptance to roll the dice in evenly matched fights. And I'm sure if they are willing, names that we haven't yet seen on Riyadh's season cards, such as Joe Joyce, Derek Chisora, Michael Hunter, will all be involved in hugely competitive fights going forward. But there is one man who, in my opinion, has been missing from Riyadh season. A man who has always demanded eyeballs and attention both inside and outside the ring. And a man who, despite inactivity, in my opinion, does still have one last chapter in his story. And that man is the body snatcher. Dillian White. Because this year we saw the return of Dillian White in one of the most bizarre outings the former title challenger has ever surely had. Which, let's be honest, is really saying something, bearing in mind that this man boxed on one of the first ever Saudi-backed cards. He's boxed in Eddie Hearn's back garden, and he's even boxed in a 2,000-seater rugby stadium in Gibraltar. But this one surely takes the biscuit after he took on Christian Hammer in a hotel in Ireland. Which means in the space of just a couple of years, is, the Brixton man went from boxing in the main event at Wembley Stadium in front of 94,000 to boxing in a hotel in front of what I've heard was just a couple of hundred people. And the fight ended within a couple of rounds of a visibly frustrated Dillian White branding his opponent a coward after Hammer seemingly looked for an easy way out. And I had hoped that off the back of that win, we would see the body snatcher return to big fights as soon as possible. But we're seven months on now, and I even heard so much as a peep in regards to what is next for Dillian White. So can someone please answer me the question, where is Dillian White? White turned pro back in 2011 with little fanfare, boxing in small hall shows, and in my opinion, going somewhat under the radar until his career hit its first road bump when he failed a drug test and was given a two-year ban. However, at the time, this wasn't really looked at in the same way as other drug scandals in the sport because White came out immediately and owned up to taking a supplement called Jack 3D, which he was on aware was on the ban list and I've got to be honest I remember this supplement you could buy it I'm pretty sure in Holland and Barra and other local high street shops and not only that in big name chain brand gyms you could literally buy this supplement from behind the counter so I think it was pretty easy in that moment to give Dillian White the benefit of the doubt here however despite not much being known about Dillian White before the ban it was ironically during his ban that the boxing world started to really find out who Dillian White was. And that was because of the emergence of Olympic gold medalist and now pro prospect Anthony Joshua. When AJ burst onto the scene blasting through opponents every couple of months, UK boxing fans couldn't help but feel like we had the next heavyweight champion on our hands. But despite us seeing the clear and obvious display of punch power, we did have the question as to how good was the heavyweight hope at actually taking a punch. And this is where the footage surfaced of an amateur contest that Anthony Joshua had in which he was both dropped and beat while wearing head guards and bigger gloves and the man dishing out that punish to AJ was none other than Dillian White. Now this obviously ignited public interest around the mysterious heavyweight prospect and when stories came out about White being a sparring partner for both Tyson Fury and Vladimir Klitschko, the public very firmly had an appetite to see this fight again but in the pro ranks. So after he had served his ban, Eddie Hearn quickly signed Dillian White and boxed him on a couple of shows to showcase the heavyweight prospects before he made the fight with AJ for both the British and Commonwealth titles at a packed out O2 arena. And this fight was an instant classic in my opinion, man. White survived an early barrage. He managed to rock Anthony Joshua, but he did end up succumbing after that initial success and was stopped by a huge right uppercut in the seventh round. An uppercut that would almost end up becoming somewhat of a blueprint on how to hurt the Brixton man as his career went on, but 
Either way, despite the loss, Dillian White's stock grew, and at this point, he ignited his run towards a heavyweight world title shot. White went on an 11-fight winning streak, which included an absolute classic war between himself and Derek Chisora, a fight so good and so competitive that the public demanded a rematch that would eventually take place down the line when White put any doubts to bed after becoming the first man since David Hay to knock out the heavyweight veteran. And that signature left hook Dillian White knocked Chisora out with was also put to good use in that run of fights when he dropped Joseph Parker with the same shot and knocked former regular world champion Lucas Brown out cold with that same shot. But White did show vulnerability during that run of fights being dropped by both Joseph Parker and Oscar Rivas on his way to winning. Winning in somewhat controversial fashion by the way especially against Oscar Rivas after it came out that White had tested positive once again for a banned substance in the build-up to that fight. However, much like the first failed drug test, this was by no means straightforward after UCAD came out and cleared Dillian White and within just months of this fight, he was back in the ring boxing Marius Wack on a Saudi card. Then the pandemic hit and boxing was put on hold for a couple of months before returning behind closed doors or in Matchroom's case, in Eddie Hearn's back garden. Four events over a four-week span which culminated in the biggest of them all when Dillian White stepped up to face former world title challenger Alexander Povetkin. And this fight started great for White where he'd showcased both his improved boxing ability and punch power where he routinely outboxed Povetkin and dropped him twice in the fourth round. And at the time I remember being sat there thinking has Dillian White come on further since his fight with AJ than Anthony Joshua actually has? Because they've got a few mutual opponents now, and when you look at that, Dillian White was able to heavily drop Joseph Parker, whereas AJ wasn't, and in the Povetkin fight, he had started off doing what he was doing from the first bell, basically outboxing and beating Povetkin up, and at this point, it looked like he was going to stop Povetkin quicker than AJ had. Nothing away. <laughs> Yeah, until that happened, Alexander Povetkin hits Dillian White with one of the best thrown uppercuts that I have seen in boxing and knocks him out cold. Now, many people thought that this would be the end of Dillian White or that he would need a significant rebuilding process, but Dillian White in this moment showed his mental resilience. When he immediately took the rematch with Alexander Povetkin, he went straight back in there and he stopped the Russian one round quicker than Povetkin had managed to stop him. Then after waiting for what seemed like an eternity, Dillian White would finally get his world title shot when he took on Tyson Fury at Wembley Stadium in front of 94,000 fans for the WBC Heavyweight World title. And I've got to be honest, I was in attendance for this one and I expected nothing but fireworks in this fight. I backed Fury to win, but I felt that White would make it an uncomfortable night's work for him until that point. But White didn't really fight with either the belief or the ferocity that we had come to know and love him for. And in the sixth round, that faithful shot once again, the right uppercut both landed and knocked out Dillian White. But despite a disappointing performance on that night, you have got to give Dillian White credit, man. From boxing at small hall venues, leisure centres, to selling out Wembley Stadium in front of nearly 100,000 people and giving us so many entertaining fights in the process, there was nothing disappointing for me about Dillian White's career. But a career's not done yet, as Dillian White has had two fights since boxing Jermaine Franklin and Chris and Hammer respectively and if you look at Dillian White's willingness to roll the dice in the past and be in competitive matchups then you would assume there are definitely fights for the body snatcher on Riyadh season. Starting off you've got Martin Bacoli. Now these two nearly actually came to blows at a boxing event about a year ago and the build up to this one would definitely be tasty to say the least but for me this just ain't a good fight for Dylan White because there's 50-50 fights and then there's fighting Martin Bacoli. Because Martin Bacoli, for me, is probably the most dangerous man right now outside of the champions and Tyson Fury. And not only that, 
he throws a great uppercut and he throws it from both his lead and his backhand. So personally, I'd make McCauley a favourite in this one. And if I'm honest, I think I'd make him a favourite by some margin, you know. Then you've got a couple of rematches that I wouldn't be adverse to seeing at all. You've got the trilogy fight with Derek Delboy Chisora, who's coming off the back of a career best win, probably against Joe Joyce. And I saw Delboy last week out in Saudi, you know, and he has definitely been soaking up the Riyadh season atmosphere. So whether it's against Dillian White or not, we are going to see Derek Chisora on a Riyadh season card very, very soon. Or you've got Joseph Parker, who's now on a great run of form under new trainer Andy Lee, and he would absolutely relish the chance to get back in there with Dylan White, knowing that he has now acquired a lot of experience and momentum since that first fight. And that first fight, by the way, was a fight that he was moments away from winning, which means I think Joseph Parker would jump at the chance to fight Dillian White and you know what I also think Dillian White should jump at the chance to fight Joseph Parker because whether or not Parker has the momentum with him in the heavyweight division the power aspect is so so significant and Dillian White knows that he has got the power to both hurt and drop Joseph Parker and unlike the Chisora fight if Dillian White was to get a win against Joseph Parker, that pretty much catapults him straight back into the mix. Whereas a third fight against Derek Chisora and a third win against Derek Chisora doesn't do as much in terms of moving Dillian White up and progressing him going forward. A crossroads fight with himself and Filip Hergovic, who's coming off a loss, could also be an interesting one. But for me, the fight I would love to see Dillian White in now is between himself and Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Could you imagine the build-up to that? one that would be electric you know and not only would the build-up be good stylistically I cannot see a way that that would make for a bad fight I think that the fight would definitely live up to the build-up so there are my picks for Dillian White's next fight but I'm very eager to hear what you lot think on Dillian White's career as a whole and whether or not you think that he still has more to give I understand that a lot of you might not think that Dillian White is going to necessarily go on and even win let alone challenge for world titles but he can definitely be in more exciting fights and as we've seen already on Riyadh season so far it's not all about the belts you know it's about the fights that you're in so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below please subscribe if you haven't already I'm working really hard to get these videos out for you guys and I will see you all in the next one